Imagine if you had access to the entire human history in the form of a movie. And just like a movie, you could move ahead and go back whenever you wanted. What would you see? Beauty, inspiration, power, misery, rise and fall, deceit and truth. But above all, you would see paradox, unexpected, unfathomable paradox. We stop in 2018 and we see the entire world shining with the advances in technology. Can you imagine a world without technology? The GPS that we use in our cars is a proof that Einstein's theory was correct. But when he published his paper in 1905, it needed proof, experimental, empirical proof to be accepted by the world. And that is the foundation on which our science is built, the scientific method. Nothing is taken as scientific truth unless it is experimentally verified. So we go back to see when was this radical method adopted. It is 1267 and the famous philosopher Roger Bacon presents his opus majus to the Pope. Apart from having a very strong occult overtone to this book, he writes theories supplied by reason should be verified by sensory data aided by instruments. This is the birth of the scientific method, a new era in history much like an earthquake of knowledge and inventions is about to commence. However, we see the last chapter in this book of Roger Bacon, who was known to practice magic and believed that he could talk to the dead, is on optics by an Iraqi physicist Ibn al-Haytham. We go to Cairo, 1011. Ibn al-Haytham, just to save his neck from the ill-tempered caliph who had commissioned him to construct a nearly impossible hydraulic system on the Nile, feigned madness and remained in house arrest for a decade. And that decade is by far the most crucial for humanity. He writes his famous book on optics and officially formulates the scientific method that greatly influenced the likes of Roger Bacon, Francis Bacon and eventually Isaac Newton. Ibn al-Haytham also wrote on theology and his inspiration for devising the scientific method explicitly is the Quranic message of drawing close to God through observing physical phenomena around. Something he expresses in these words, I constantly sought knowledge and truth and it became my belief that for gaining access to the effulgence and closeness to God, there is no better way than that of searching for truth and science. Now we take the scientific method for granted. Uh, but in Ibn al-Haytham's time, it wasn't that obvious. It was a very big leap from speculative theories and philosophy that characterized earlier traditions like those of the Greeks and the Indians to say that we can discern science fact from fiction by repeated experimentation is based on a very bold assumption that the universe has truth embedded in it. And this is a very Quranic notion. Ibn al-Haytham's writing reveal that inspiration from the Quran made him understand that in a universe of change, the only thing that is permanent and stable are the laws of nature, or as the Quran calls them, Sunnatullah. Nature is referred to as the habit of God in the Quran. It was this idea of an unchanging side to nature or Sunnatullah that allows for repeated experimentation. And there it was, the foundation of modern science, born out of the Quranic worldview.